Good morning, guys. Aaj Jaipur Mehe. We've had an intense past week. Yeah. Aaj hum. Aaj hum. Jaipur. Jaipur Mehe. Very good. So we spent the last week doing a self defense course, which was military grade. It was very, very intense. Um, that's why we didn't record it because we were so into it. But if you follow us on Instagram, you saw all the stories. It was wild, you guys. Anyway, we're in Jaipur, that's where we've been for the last week and now we're finally able to go out and explore because the last seven days it's been training for five hours in the morning, have a meal, crash on the bed, recover and then evening session. So no time for going out and sightseeing until now. All right, so we're gonna keep you guys updated on all the places we go today. We are checking out of the hotel and Holi is coming up, so we're gonna be going to spend uh, Holi at Devang's place. Hey! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! For right now, adventures in Jaipur. All right, we'll see you guys outside. It was the guy, uh, our owner, who told us to get tea from this respective place, a special tea. Apparently, this is like the best tea in the town of Jaipur. which is supposed to be the best tea in Jaipur. For people who are from Jaipur, you might not like what I'm about to say, but I have to tell the truth that Devang's mom makes better tea. Sorry guys, but she uses a lot of cardamom, cloves, pepper, cinnamon, and it's just flavor bursting in her mouth. This tea had a strong flavor, which I liked, but it didn't have the taste of all the spices coming together to make it a dynamic experience. Yeah. Now I sound like a tea snob. I didn't even start drinking tea until I came to Asia. <laughs> and how is that lassi coming? The lassi is really nice. So I'm kind of weird about dairy. I can digest anything, but I'm very picky, so I don't even want to try chach. Did I say it right? Chach? Chach. Chach. Because it freaks me out. With the lassi, I kind of like it. Do you want me Do you want me I'm also having a sandwich, which um, is spicy, as is everything. It's like the lasagna we had last night. It was supposed to be like with a red sauce, but actually it was a fire sauce. Surprise. Um, but this is good. It has real cheese, peppers, tandoori sauce. I'm happy with this. That's uh, her version of Indian pizza. So the for her. You can hear the traffic behind me is crazy. I know that for Indians it's quite normal, uh, but, and even for me, I'm used to it now, but in the States, you only honk for two reasons. One is a warning because it's immediate, it's essential, and the second is that you're an asshole and you're just honking because you're being selfish. In India, everyone honks, so it's a totally different experience. Uh, but anyway, I'm glad to be out of all the chaos. Um, and into the uh, more peaceful part of Jaipur and heading towards our destination. Aji, so yeah, Jaipur ki khate the. Now we are in that part of the town. Jahan pe matlab na ekdam wo old old heritage shuru ho gaya. Sorry for the honking, yaar. India mein hu. So. If you have a same circuit, follow the same circuit. So, this is the best circuit. You can break the brick. You can walk the walking distance. 
ज़्यादा नहीं चलना पड़ेगा वॉकिंग डिस्टेंस है आप बहुत सकते हो जंतर मंतर अभी मैं आपको अंदर लेके जाऊँगा ठीक है ओके गाइस आई गॉट अ हैट आई एम प्रिपेयर्ड फॉर द डे सो बिहाइंड मी इज द टिकट ऑफिस फॉर जंतर मंतर Uh, just so you know, they do not accept Google Pay or credit cards. The only thing they take is cash, and the ATM is pretty far away. Sorry for interrupting, guys. Only cash, and yeah. the ticket is for 250. And I look like a zombie. It's really hot, and uh, I'm dehydrated. And we love you too. Like, comment, subscribe. <laughs> so remember to bring water, sunscreen, and cash. <laughs> okay, we're inside. So uh, just so you guys know, if you want to get a guide, it's 200 rupees plus a tip, which is up to you. So we decided to get a guide because this place is massive, and there's really no point in going somewhere if you're not going to learn about it, right? I don't know about it being massive, but there is this thing that you know these these gears, these astronomical objects. I mean, we researched about it, but it was not enough. So we needed someone to make us show what's the practical significance of it. So we start from here. Yeah. This place known as uh, Astronomical Observatory and local name is Jantar Mantra. It's a two Hindi word. Jantar it means instrument like a structure. Mantar it means calculation. So it's an instrument calculation observatory built by Maharaja in 1728. Before this, he done four observatories in north of India, Delhi. Ujjain, Mathura, Varanasi. Different, different part of India. Only for experiment, he got knowledge from there. Then done it here. So first instrument is here, known as compass. At night time, sit down here, put it your eyes and look up. So we find out from here north star. No so, matter what season, no. Why? Because that the object always is fixed. Doesn't move inside in the sky. But, uh, yeah, but the Earth is revolve is like this, na. The the polar star is here. The surface so big. So then we can't see from here the angle of the polar star, the edge of polar star. That's why the Earth is revolve is like this. Rotate also is like this. That's why the all the polar star always is fixed. Yeah. It was passing through. Oh, so you look through this uh, place. Ah, then uh, like this. Then we find out the polar. Ah, okay. And this this all happened in 17th century. In 17th century, really seriously. This is a fucking watch behind me. See this? It's a fucking watch. Starts from there, you can go up till there. Only for the daytime because that's when the sun is out. And for the night, you can't actually figure it out. Ah, jee, so this behind me, this is the world's biggest sundial. Now, what is sundial? You know when we get lost in the wilderness and you like you need to figure out what time it is. If you ever want to, you put that thing, you poke that one uh, stick on the ground, and you because of the sun falling, you try to figure out what time it is based on the shadow. So in 17th century, when the clock wasn't invented, there was nothing such sort of. This guy, the king, that time king, invented this big. Machine. He actually went to made a smaller one, but he was not satisfied. Then he made up this bigger one to, you know, exactly get the time. What is the time? So in this bigger one, I'm actually gonna take you in, and because of the shadow, we're gonna show you what the time is right now in Jaipur. All right, let's go. So people, we are already inside this compound of this biggest sundial. Now we have this wall over here, and this wall will make an impression on this marble that you see. Now it's already. Beyond 12, so this marble won't be showing us the shadow. We'll have to go to the other side, and let's take you to the other side. Come. So as you can see, this wall is making that shadow on this marble, and based on that shadow, we can figure out the time. The time is being the local time of Jaipur, which is different from the rest of the Indian standard time. But let's figure out what the time is. Let's go. This each compartment is of 15 minutes. So 15 minutes, this one marble done. This is 30 minutes, and then this is going up till 45. So ये बीच में हो गया around 38 something. So that 38, and then adding 36 more, which is the Indian Standard Time. It will come around 116. That's the time is. 
एंड दिस इज वे बियॉन्ड इन ओके जी दिस वॉज जंतर मंतर फॉर यू लॉट हैज टू बी कवर्ड तो थोड़ा रैपिड से स्पीड बढ़ाते हैं बहुत टाइम लगे यहाँ पे यार बिकॉज बड़ी इंटरेस्टिंग जगह है बहुत ज़्यादा इंटरेस्टिंग है बट एनी वे इसके जस्ट ऑपोजिट में है दूसरी जगह जहाँ पहुँचने वाले हैं विच इज सिटी पैलेस तो चलो सिटी पैलेस चलते हैं धूप बहुत तेज है तो यार पानी जरूर रख लेना हाइड्रेशन जरूर कर लेना Hey, so here we are inside of the city palace. So this place is pretty old. From 1727 is when the king moved here from Amber and started living here. And as you can see, it's very pink. Jaipur is known as the pink city, which I just found out when I was in the taxi a few days ago. And uh, the reason though, which I didn't know, is that a uh, long time ago, the prince of Wales, who then turned into the king, came here for a visit and they're like, "Oh, we want to impress this guy." So they painted everything pink for him. I don't know, maybe pink was his favorite color. <laughs> so, uh yeah, everything's pink, which is a lot better than white because white reflects the sun and just burns your eyes. Um but anyway this place is kind of confusing the way it's laid out. We went into a few different places. They ended up being shops, not museums or anything. And you can't take photography indoors, so that's why I'm recording this out here. Um but inside the museum there's a lot of textiles from that time, uh like clothing that were worn that was worn by the kings and the queens, um the other members of the royal family. Actually the royal family still lives here. um not in the sections where tourists are allowed to check out but they do live on the property um and there's a princess here who she is in charge of the museum and um she does a lot of cool humanitarian work she donates to uh local underprivileged and underemployed women which i thought was a very cool thing for uh, royalty to be engaged in charity um but yeah i mean this place is pretty big and very majestic looking let me show you the architecture So the architecture is a mix of Rajput style um the uh, Mughal and European all coming together. So the architect that designed this was commissioned by the king himself, the one who brought his whole family here and decided to start living here because uh, the place they were living before in Amber didn't have enough water and the population was expanding too quickly. So they're like, "Hey guys, let's go get some space for ourselves." And that's what they did. So uh yeah, this turned into City Palace as we know it today. All right, so we are walking around again. It's still pretty hot. And I have to say that I don't really see it being worth the money, you guys. I'm going to be totally honest with you because honesty is important. There's a lot of shops. If you like shopping, you can find textiles, clothing, jewelry, knickknacks, souvenirs, stuff like that. And if that's your thing, cool. Definitely worth it because there is some cool stuff to buy. I'm more of a minimalist and also Devang and I travel with only what we can carry on our backs. So it's a kind of a big limitation. So for me, I'm really not interested in what I've seen here. Um I more enjoy cultural things. So if that's your thing, guys, just don't come. Not worth the money. Give me my money back. Give me my money back. So, we uh just went inside there. It's the Dabur Darbar. 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 Uh it's the place where people do all the entertaining. So it's the entertainment hall, that's what I'm going to call it. Um and there was some information there. There were a lot of paintings of weird men wearing dresses with mustaches that curled like that. I mean, if that's the style, all the more power to you, but it was a little bizarre for me. Uh there were some beautiful rugs and there were two thrones, one for the queen, one for the king, with these giant fans for I guess the servants or workers whatever to fan them, cool them off. Um there were yeah, there was some good information in there. Um so this place is a mix of uh cultural heritage and also a lot of shopping. So if you're interested in culture, you can get something from this if you like shopping. You can get something cool here. Um overall, it's a a nice little jump into the history of Rajasthan. So uh yeah. Oh, 
good times. Me as an Indian, I paid 300 bucks to get in there. This was a big ticket to be inside this property. Jocelyn paid 700 bucks, 700 INA to be in there. I think it's overpriced, very overpriced. There should be more to this, much more to this. Not satisfied. Well, hello again. So I'm on the rooftop behind me. Uh, it's kind of hard to see. Is uh, one of the most famous buildings around here. But that's not actually why I'm filming this. I want to talk to you guys about the people. So uh, we went to a different cafe before this and um, we had some drinks and then as soon as Dave Long went outside to take some photos uh, one of the guys that worked there was striking up a conversation with me and um, he was asking where am I from typical first question um, which is fine but then he was asking me some weird things he was saying um, are you married and uh, we're, I'm not married but Dave Long and I are engaged as many of you have probably seen our post on Instagram um, but I told him, yeah, I'm married because I just didn't want the attention. And I also know that fiancés are not a thing that's widely recognized in India. And then he immediately asked, how many babies do you have? Which is like a very weird question for me <clears throat> because, first of all, a lot of women don't want to have children. It also can be a very sensitive topic for women who've had miscarriages or who can't get pregnant. Um, very sensitive topic. Uh, of course, Devang and I haven't tried because we are, our lives are too crazy and we're not at that stage yet. Um, but I feel like asking people how many children they have when it's, you're, it's just a stranger and it's a personal question, it just shouldn't be asked. Um, so I, I told him I don't have kids and he asked me three more times and I'm like, dude, is the answer zero not acceptable? I mean, the next question I thought he was going to say is how old are you and then I would have said, 32 and then he would have been like oh 32 and no kids you know that's kind of what i would expect but he didn't ask me that instead he asked me how much money i had and i was like i don't have any cash okay then he was asking me like well how many rupees do you have and i'm like what how is that different um and then he was saying that i have really nice eyes which Coming from a, an acquaintance or a friend or something is a nice thing to hear. Coming from a weird guy at a cafe who just starts talking to you because your fiance leaves the room and he wants to know all about your personal life, not as cool, not as fun. Um, so I just want to say that I, I kind of know to expect this from the less cultured people in society, uh, less maybe less less worldly for sure um, but it's still quite annoying um, then on the other hand I also know that it's probably innocent people are just curious and that's how they're raised to get in your face and ask super personal questions that are just normal here um, and then there there was a woman on the street who I, <laughs> I was um, just walking and I saw out of the corner of my eye that she had her phone up and I was in the background and so I moved out of the way to get out of the photo and then she turned her phone so I was again in the background and I realized okay she's trying to get a picture with a foreigner um, and I entertained her I came up to her put my arm around her shoulder and she smiled like she was really happy about it which kind of makes me feel weird because I don't think that um, being a foreigner or being white or whatever it is that attracted her to me um, is like a valid reason for me to be special enough to want to take a selfie with like I haven't done anything amazing that she would even know about um, but I also understand that's kind of how it is like seeing a foreigner here maybe getting a photo with them might be a cool thing to show your friends I don't know but it's just I would rather be recognized for things I do rather than how I look but hey that's life when you're traveling and you are always looking different from everyone around you I'm used to it I'm just uh, also quite aware because you know I'm I'm a feminist as I think we all should be and it's kind of weird walking around and like getting all these looks and people shouting out the card like hello 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 or like asking you how many babies you have because would you ask a guy that probably not would you ask a guy how much money he has probably not so uh, those are my observations for the day. 
but I want to say that I've really enjoyed our little city tour of Jaipur. It's colorful, um, it's unique. I like the architecture. Uh, I have enjoyed seeing the all the different shops with the beautiful dresses and knickknacks and things, even though I didn't buy any because we don't really have space in our bags being on the road. But I enjoyed looking. Window shopping is what we call it. Um, yeah, and it was a nice little last day in Jaipur after finishing our self-defense course. But I'm looking forward to Holi. We're gonna make a video about Holi. It will be my first ever Holi. And um, I'm doing it right. I'm doing it in India with Devang's family, fully incorporated into the traditional Indian life. So watch out for that video. All right, guys. As always, like, comment, and subscribe to our channel to follow our adventures around the world. Okay, Tomb Raider out. Hi. Ask me questions, like Hello. mostly where I'm from. That guy back there with... Hi. <laughs> but I really like the streets of Jaipur. They're colorful, vibrant, and full of life. Wouldn't you say so? Pinky. Pinky, pinky.